Hello, my dear friends. Today we are going to discuss about extremely important early romantic poet John Keats. John Keats was born on 31st October 1975. His father's name was Thomas Keats and mother was Frances Jennings Keats. He was born in Morgate, London. John Keats was a medical student at Guy's Hospital. He is regarded as the romantic poet of second generation along with Shelley, P.B. Shelley and John Byron. His first poem, An Imitation of a Spencer, is extremely important work which was published in the year 1814. He was inspired by Leigh Hunt and Byron. His friend Charles Cordor Clark was very intimate to him. He died of tuberculosis. Very, at that time, it was very dangerous disease. He died at a very early age of 25 only. Let's talk about his important works. Here we find Odd on Melancholy, Odd to a Nightingale, Odd to Psyche, Odd to Odd on a Gracian Urn, Odd to Autumn, Odd to Indolence, these are kids' odds. A apart from these, we have O Solitude, Endymion, The Eve of St. Agnes, Lamia, Isabella, etc. Uh, there are many more, but I have included these many because these are extremely important from examination point of view. So here, we are going to discuss in details about these works of John Keats. So let's begin. Odd to Melancholy was published in the year 1819. It is about, it was written by the British romantic, romantic poet John Keats. It is one of the five odds composed in 1819, which are considered to be among his best work. Odd on Melancholy is the shortest of the five famous odds John Keats wrote in the spring and summer of 1819. It focuses on melancholy, that peculiar human mood so often associated with depression, sadness and dark morbidity. He provides poetic remedies to help alleviate potentially painful dark emotions and turn them into joy, pleasure and sensuality, but not without cost. This odd was likely inspired by a book written in 1621 by Robert Burton called The Anatomy of Melancholy. We know that Keats was impressed with this hefty tomb because his annotated copy of the book still exists. He underlined the lines that interested him in a section titled Cure of Love Melancholy. Let's talk about the summary of the poem. In the poem, Keats tells the reader how to respond to melancholy that we, what we today call depression. First, he says, do not drink the water of Leith. In Greek mythology, Leith was a river that passed through Hades, the underworld. Swallowing its magical water induced forgetfulness. Thus, Keats is advising the reader not to take a drug that dulls the senses against melancholy. Second, do not take deadly poison such as wolfsbane and nightshade. To end your tribulation. Third, do not dwell on the betel, an ancient Egyptian symbol of death or the death moth, an insect bearing an image resembling that of a human skull and expressions of your soul and do not allow the owl to become a partner to your gloom. Such measures will drown the anguish you feel. Instead, when melancholy falls upon you, like a weeping cloud, glut yourself on the beauty of a rose, of a seaside rainbow, or a cluster of peonies. Or, if, you beloved, if your beloved exhibits anger, hold her hand through it all and feed deep, deep upon her peerless eyes. Following this advice will teach you that 
when you take pleasure in beauty of nature or another human being you also experience melancholy for beauty lives a short life flowers die within months of their birth and the rainbow dissipates minutes after it forms important points from this poetry essentially the poem is about how to deal essentially the poem is about how to deal and how not to deal with deep sadness the speaker comes across as a kind of advisor who warns against turning to intoxication or a death for relief from melancholy the poem also establishes a link between the good things in life and melancholy because anything good is doomed to end the poem suggests that all beauty is suffused with a kind of poignant sadness in odds three stanzas reflect a process of acceptance of the dark mood of working with melancholy creativity creatively not being defeated by it odd and melancholy consists of three stanzas with 10 lines each altogether 30 lines because the poem has fewer stanzas than odd on indolence and odd on aggression earn the rhyme scheme appears less elaborate with the first and second stanzas sharing a rhyme scheme of a b a b c d e c d e while the third takes on one of its own a b a b c d e d c e let's move ahead as with odd on aggression on odd on indolence and to autumn each stanza begins with an ab ab rhyme scheme then finishes with a meltonic sestet the general meter of the poem is iambic pentameter let's move to the next slide odd to on melancholy Ode on Melancholy is a romantic ode, a dignified but highly lyrical or emotional poem in which the author speaks to a person or thing absent or present. In this famous ode, the speaker addresses the reader while developing his theme. The romantic ode was at the pinnacle of its popularity in the 19th century. It was the result of an author's deep meditation on his subject john kitts completed odd on melancholy in may 1819 the london firm of taylor and hesse published the odd in 1820 as part of a collection entitled lamia isabella the eve of saint agnes and other poems the end rhyme of the two first two stanzas follows this pattern a b a b c d e c d e the end rhyme of the third stanza changes to this pattern a b a b c d e c d d c e the poem also contains internal rhyme the meter of the poem consists mainly of iambic pentameter as line 9 and 10 of the first stanza demonstrate let's move to the next poetry odd to a nightingale which was written in the year 1819 odd to a nightingale was written by romantic poet john keats in the spring of 1819 at 80 lines it is the longest of keats odes please underline this The poem focuses on a speaker standing in a dark forest listening to the beguiling and beautiful song of the nightingale bird. This provokes a deep and meandering meditation by the speaker on time, death, beauty, nature and human suffering, something the speaker would very much like to escape. Odd to Nightingale is a phenomenal poem. that relates life sufferings to the briefness of birds song it was first published in 1819 written by john kitts a popular romantic poet 
the poem explores the wonder and life and death wonder of life and death it comprises the experience of the poet his miseries and poetic imagination its popularity lies in the fact that it represents things related to life art literature and nature and seeks a common relationship from them let's move towards the summary of the poetry the speaker opens with a declaration of his own heartache he feels numb as though he had taken a drug only a moment ago he is addressing a nightingale he hears singing somewhere in the forest and says that his drowsy numbness is not from envy of nightingale's happiness but rather from sharing it too completely he is too happy that nightingale sings the music of summer from amid some unseen lot of green trees and shadows in the second stanza the speaker longs for the oblivion of alcohol expressing his wish for wine a draught of vintage that would taste like the country and like pleasant dances like peasant dances and let them leave the world unseen and disappear into the dim forest with the nightingale in the third stanza he explains his desire to fade away saying he would like to forget the troubles the nightingale has been has never known the weariness the fever and the fright of human life with its unconsciousness that everything is mortal and nothing lasts youth grows pale and specter thin and dies and beauty cannot keep her lustrous eyes in the fourth stanza the speaker talks tells the nightingale to fly away and he will follow not through alcohol but charioted by bachus and his pards but through poetry which will give him viewless wings he says he is already with the nightingale and describes the forest glade where even the moonlight is hidden by the trees except the light that breaks through when he bridges when the bridges blow the branches in the fifth stanza the po- the speaker says that he cannot see the flowers in the glade but can guess them in embalmed darkness white hawthorn eglantine violet and musk rose the murmurous haunt of flies on summer eves in the sixth stanza the po- the speaker listens in the dark to the nightingale saying that he has often been half in love with the idea of dying and called death soft names in many rhymes surrounded by the nightingale's song the speaker thinks that the idea of death seems richer than ever and he longs to seize upon the midnight with no pain while the nightingale pours its soul aesthetically forth if he were to die the nightingale would continue to sing he says but he would have ears in vain and be no longer able to hear in the seventh stanza the speaker tells the nightingale that it is immortal that it was not born for death he says that the voice he hears singing he always been heard by ancient emperors and clones by homesick ruth he even says the song has often charmed open magic windows looking out over the foam of perilous seas in fairy lands forlorn in the eighth stanza the word 
forlorn tolls like a bell to restore the speaker from the preoccupation with the nightingale and back into himself. Next point. As the nightingale flies farther away from him, he laments that his imagination has failed him and says that he can no longer recall whether the nightingale's music was a vision or a waking dream. Now that the music is gone, the speaker cannot recall whether he himself is awake or asleep. <laughs>